I'm a writer. I grew up writing pretty much since I was from, from middle school all the way up until now. And I was a part of this um, Young Playwrights Coterie Theaters Roundtable where the young people would write these um, short stories. And if your work was good enough, the local actors would perform it. That's mm -hmm. dope. And so I just always kept with my imagination. I had parents who worked hard. You know, my mom was a janitor. My father um, was a sanitation worker. My stepdad, just like my dad, uh, worked at the post office. So I grew up in a very working class family where like after my after school programs were in the arts mm -hmm. and I always wrote and when it was time for me to write my own album I dreamt big I didn't say I didn't limit myself I didn't say I can't talk about an android from 2719 that falls in love with a human like I just I've always kept that that sense of storytelling with me and having a deeper meaning because it, it does have lots of parallels to what androids mean Androids to me mean the new other. You mean yeah. artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence, yeah. So um, I say that to say I felt an obligation to complete that story. It's still not complete, but I felt a deeper responsibility to get back to Dirty Computer, which was a concept I had before I started um, the Arc Android and Metropolis in my, my previous albums. So what I wanted to do... Um, with this project was uh, challenge myself to be as more you know to be as honest, open, more vulnerable, mm -hmm. and then doing those films, you know, made me feel like if I don't tell my story, who will? Right. Like our stories will be erased if I don't if I don't make songs like Pink or Django Jane or Make Me Feel or I like that, you know, who will? Right. I mean, and I, I try to just do what I can, what I feel like I can contribute. I think there are a lot of incredible artists doing amazing things, mm -hmm. but I felt a personal calling to just stay rooted in my authenticity, to stay rooted in vulnerability, because through vulnerability, I think you um, get more of an understanding of a person, and empathy comes, and then, you know, you guys can, even if you don't agree, you can agree to disagree, you might like each other, and then that there comes the unity. That's right. when, like, we can right. all come together, yeah. you know, and I just, I feel like music can do that. On, on a real quick side note, <coughs> you like you like sci-fi? Bless you. Do I? Yeah. Not all sci-fi. Not all? Okay. It just seemed like the sci-fi theme was a little bit around with the android and your stories. Uh, I was going to ask He you. just called you a nerd. No, we talked about, I, she is kind of. I am a nerd. No, oh, okay. Okay. no, 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 no. I am brave. Superhero it. nerds. I, I wanted to ask you what was your favorite sci fi film ever. Oh, that's like asking me what my favorite toe is. Too many, right? Like, I, <laughs> I need all of them. Um, no, I love Star Wars, obviously. Right. I, um, The Matrix. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's like okay. like my top. That's in yeah, my no, top three. I'm a nerd too, just though. Just though. Um, Black Panther. What are we talking oh, about? Yeah, yeah. Uganda. What are we talking about? And I live in Atlanta, and they film the yeah. majority of, of Black Panther in Atlanta. So technically, I'm from Wakanda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, guys, you are. Facts. Um, Facts. Yeah. The, um, when I was writing Dirty Computer, those are all my friends, like Daniel um, and Lupita and Denai and Chadwick. Um, I remember them coming over when I was working on it, and I played them all these songs. Uh, Django Jane I hadn't done, but when I finally released them, they were all excited because they had heard them first, and they were like, when are they coming out, when are they coming out? And so they, that has been an inspiration for me, watching what Black Panther is doing in the box office, watching, you know, all of these amazingly gifted black actors and actresses win, you know, uh -huh. in numbers, uh -huh. and us telling our stories, us in sci-fi, sci that's science fiction, that's yeah. Afrofuturism, that's us in the future. That's what Afrofuturism is, don't, us Don't being quote able me, to but I think there's literally one white Caucasian person on the whole cast. Yeah. The whole cast, I mean yeah, the I whole production. Yeah, I think there was probably one. Mm -hmm. One. Maybe two, because I don't want to give it away. One might have, probably, If you haven't seen it, then it I It might have been mixed. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, maybe one or two, but I'm saying to say that the leads of that film were black. Yes. Chadwick, all of them together, director. people came for those. Yes, the director, director. Um, 
Yeah, I think that it's just it's just phenomenal to be making music at a time where you got Black Panther. It's like it's nothing we can't do. Well, you know, Black Panther is to you know what you're saying right now is to what Hidden Figures was to so many young girls and so many African American women. I mean, it was big, and it might not have been as big be as big as Black Panther, but the 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 emotional tie to that movie, yeah. Hidden Figure, to me was the same as if not even deeper than Black Panther because it was a true story about these true African American women that we did not know. Yeah. And to me that was way more bigger than Wakanda. No <laughs> no disrespect to Wakanda, but just way more bigger and just felt like home in your heart when you saw it because we could identify with that for real for real well those were real life superheroes yeah you know and I oh, think yeah, that, yeah, for sure I think that you know everybody could say like there is not enough credit given to teachers to astronauts Ooh. to us in that area to teachers astronauts scientists all of that so those were real life heroes when you can send somebody to space because of your math if one decimal was off all those astronauts would have died you know you're saying is 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 you know you guys are seeing a new um you're seeing different dimensions uh -huh. of me as an artist which i i always knew like it's, it, my first couple albums i was like oh they they don't even know like they haven't seen that these sides of me i mean lots of these conversations i have with family and friends and you know they know a different side of me um but i think it just goes to show that we all are not monolithic. We're not the same. We're not going to always be the same. Nor should we feel pressure to be a slave to our own interpretations of who we are. You know, I think a lot of it was about challenging myself to be unafraid to lose people. You know what I'm You're saying? That's the gained. first thing. You're gaining. I had to be unafraid. I had to say, okay, there's a possibility that, you know, the way you're speaking, you're dressing, all that, people will have something to say. People that have followed you, they may want you to just represent this one thing in their mind, and the moment you don't, they will be like, uh, I love her, but I can't, and I can't that's fine. Her. But for my sanity, a lot of it is a little selfish, and a lot of it is um, me feeling like I need to be an example. But I had to do that, it's just spiritually. I had to make sure that I was evolving. You know, I was evolving because the moment you stop evolving, for me, it it doesn't become fun anymore. It doesn't feel like I'm walking in my purpose. It feels like I'm just repeating myself, and repetition in that area in your art, art artistry um, can really date you. You know, you can really just expire. <laughs> Fall <laughs> off the face of the earth. Yeah, just, I mean, I just as, think so that, to speak. that that that. You you know, for me, it's all about evolution and, and continuing to grow and continue to have the agency over my body, my ideas, what it is that, that I want to say and not think about numbers and not think about, well, who's going to like this? You know, you have those thoughts, but it's about picking freedom over fear. Not that you, I don't get scared. I don't, you know, I'm not like this fearless person every single day, but it's a choice because freedom is not free. It comes with great sacrifice. Right. Was each video and visual and song released strategically because like today now we have a new new song yeah, i like that thank you. and it seems like it's like For you put out these it. three <laughs> records now it's like mm, i like that like you're telling your, your fan base you're gonna like that if you don't <laughs> you better get to like it i don't know what i'm telling them right now but absolutely like i, I knew how i wanted to roll out. okay i knew it was important for me to release in this way uh, not to say that I assume Prince was an influence in your life, but he I, absolutely has I been feel influence. like he would be so proud of Make Me Feel because I it's hope just, he would. it's literally I almost closed my eyes and for a minute I think it's Prince. It's Aww. really good. No, no disrespect. It's just really, no, really good. No, I mean, that's yeah. a high honor. It is. But really there will amazing. never be. Another Prince. Ever be another Prince. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's why I say you were Nikki. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, darling Nikki. Yes. Um, I am a, you know, I'm a black woman, you know, I, Prince is a black man that when I saw him, I was just so enamored with him because I'd never seen a black man embrace his sensuality, his everything, his, yeah. his everything, everything, unapologetically in the way that he did. And I think that's probably where we, we meet. It took me, you know, having him as a guide and seeing how that looked, because I just thought it was the coolest thing to to uh, feel confident, you know, to to be as free and 
and and open aesthetically. Um, it took me seeing him, so I don't think if, if there was no prints, I, I don't think that I would feel as confident as I do behind the camera, or right. in front of the camera, the behind thing. the camera, in front of you know the album, in the studio on the album, as I do. Is the it. in the beat because I like the production? Is the a real <laughs> or, or is it like a machine? Is I that you? She just did it. <laughs> you, was that your note? I think that was. I was I just want to know if it was real or produced. That's all. That's all. It's, it's, it's all of it. Yeah, you just did it. It's, it's starting the conversation. <laughs> sure. And lastly, for me, I, and then I'm done. I'll ask it anybody else. The black and white theme is that just something? Your favorite colors? You know. Uh -huh. You know, you know why? You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't. Janelle made a promise. You know, your mother was a janitor yes, at a hotel, yeah. and she yeah. was a service worker, and you felt like you wanted to be in uniform yeah. because your times. mom wore a uniform every Absolutely. day. So you wear your uniform in honor of your Absolutely. mother. Your mother, did she ever say, Girl, put some red on. <laughs> put some blue on, Janelle. I get it. Mama, just put some red on, please. Yellow. You look good in orange. <laughs> no, she doesn't actually. When she comes, if she was here, she'd have her black and white on too. Oh! They, they, they don't want. Yeah, you they, can't go they're wrong supportive. With black. No, it go. I and I, let me say this. I am so honored that y'all came in dressed <laughs> oh, like this. This means the world to me. Oh, we just this every day. Y'all would think. Do y'all? No. no. I, was <laughs> I was about to be like, I'm just oh shit! I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Like, that's incredible, but that's an honor. And I mean, not just my mom. My grandmother was a sharecropper. She picked cotton in Aberdeen, Mississippi. She wore a uniform for over 25 years to serve at the county jail. Food. Mm -hmm. My, you, you know, said your dad was a my driver. dad was a sanitation driver. Dri well, he was through the trash. Then he became a driver. Like I have lots of people who wear uniforms. Let and me people ask that you. protect this company, this country, wear their uniforms every day. So that means a lot. Right. What we're doing right now is not just about me. It's it's about all of us. I mean, yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. Earlier, I, mean, I started I... off dressing myself like I didn't just start wearing black and white when I, you know, when I you guys may have just may have known known about me. This right. was something in Atlanta that I did years before, and I always say that I feel very thankful to have had that time to develop myself and to figure out how I wanted to look, what I wanted my hair to right, be like, with my right, clothes. Right. Like I was doing that years as an independent artist, and what you saw. You know, with my first videos, all that was something that that came from some from our honest place from mm -hmm. me. I asked her earlier. I was like, "Hey, so with your new videos, visually, they're amazing. Do do other people tell you what to do?" And she looked at me. She was like, "Yeah, I let everybody just tell me what to do." <laughs> sure. I was like, "Oh, so no, okay." Yes, yeah, so a cool. big fat no. Do you still have that robot that does your hair? I do actually. <laughs> I love you? you digging deep like this, girl. You better keep digging deep. <laughs> would you ever get any, or would you ever like want to create any other like cool inventions that could help, you know, the ladies take that extra time, <laughs> that extra time out of the process of us getting sure. glammed up? Sure, I would love Maybe to Maybe like a lash. Yeah, it's just the, a, like a, yeah, yeah, quick. A lasher put her on yeah. it? Yeah, like this. I like lashes. That. I was just curious. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would love that. I would love to collaborate with somebody from like MIT or yeah, yeah. one of these colleges where they're developing new software. Yes. Oh, please, for the tuition seekers. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Tuition seekers. Well, I, I just got to say one more time if you, you Dirty Computer, is it on pre sale right now? Yeah, you can pre order it. It's out everywhere April 27th. I think we're going to show it on TV. So be. Be looking out. Nobody really knows that, but there, it's going to happen probably that night before the day of. You can watch it on TV, and then you obviously can have watch the emotion picture on TV. Um, and then it'll be out everywhere on April 27th. But Ladies I'm, and gentlemen, Mary I'm, Jackson in the building. No, who's Mary Jackson? Wait, That's I have one more question. Oh, movie. One more. Your motto, Phil, Phil Austin, where did that stem from, and why is it important for you to... I don't think I made that up. I think that's like a, um, a graduation uh, line that people they, they say that yeah you know fell and fell often yeah I don't remember who said it but I heard it at a graduation okay and it just kind of stuck with me yeah and I think through failing I think one you sharpen your sword you also obviously become stronger mm -hmm. after you come out of that depending on how you you know get back up um, and you look at it in, in the perspective that you take um, I think that it also allows you to get to 
the best part of your creative process. And that's what I, I was saying it as. It's like my first song that I go in and record may not be the best song. Right. Then I got to do another one. I got another one. By that fourth, fifth, sixth time that I've, you know, rewrote this song, I have redrafts, I think it'll be something that I'm proud of, you know? Yeah. And I think the more you fail at, or the more you feel like you failed at something, um, the faster you get to the good part. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, Janelle, we thank you so much thank you. for the soundtrack. I hope you guys grab the album. Oh, um, I yeah, pre-sold it. And I did. Like I it already did. You know, I'm it was hooked. written from my heart, and it's definitely centered around black girl magic and uh, those who are, are marginalized, you know, um, including the people I love. And and uh, I just hope that, yeah, I hope that, I hope that we feel seen, we feel celebrated, because this is what this album is meant to do.